perspective. I mean, if you have seen our press releases over the last couple of months, uh, was always about Spain, and we were pretty enthusiastic. Spain, another double-digit growth again and again and again. But in fact, um, strongest market by growth rate so far this year is the Netherlands, and. I personally think it's a it's a pretty interesting market because you can clearly see ups and downs um, and you see also the impact of regulations. Government through taxation has a big influence. I mean we know it already, I've seen it a couple of times. January a new taxation law and regulation is coming into place and that means that the registrations in the last quarter of the previous year are just going through the roof. So it's, it's really an interesting market. And in case you're wondering what car is Michael currently sitting in, I'm not driving as you can see. Um, well, it's a car which is pretty popular also in the Netherlands. It belongs to the middle class segment, so medium passenger car. Um, it's among the top six year to date in the Dutch fleet market was he even ranking second in May behind Skoda Octavia well and to give you more hints um, it's also playing an important role within the brand it's its top seller in fleets in uh, the Netherlands in May June and July so it's obviously pretty popular for fleet customers um, yeah and last but not least if you just rank Europe by fleet volume for this specific car Netherlands is the third strongest second is Belgium just around the corner and uh, the strongest market in sheer volume is its home market and that is Sweden It's Michael and Richard from the company Dataforce. A big thank you to Volvo Germany for giving us permission to test this wonderful fleet car. And as we have said at the Geneva Motor Show, this was sure to be a success. And this version of the Volvo V60, which you see here, is Volvo's number one registered true fleet model car for August in the Netherlands. A very cool car. Given the previous footage and the desire to keep things fresh, we decided this month to change it up just a little bit and to bring you a video press release based on the Netherlands. And what a month they are having. True fleets especially are fully charged, tanked up and yeah, going through the roof. <laughs> so as Michael just pointed out, the Netherlands is seemingly on fire. True Fleet is up an astonishing 58.3% and enjoying its highest share since December 2016. 45.8% if you're interested in the exact number. But before celebrating like it's the 1988 European Cup final again, it's worth noting that this is likely to be a short-lived surge surrounding WLTP, with a downward turn expected once new taxation comes into effect in January 2019. Tactical channels are up 86.2%, driven by the dealership manufacturer subchannel. And while private registrations are a little more sedate, but still in the black at 8.3%. All of this combined to leave the total market up 42.2%, finishing with a little over 41,000 registrations. Great, and from a brand perspective, only two OEMs inside the top 20 were not able to join in the positive growth numbers, but no less than five. We are managing to hit triple digit growth rates. And as we like to do exclusive insights for Richard's viewers and my fans, of course, <laughs> we like to concentrate a bit deeper on these five OEMs. Let's start with Volkswagen, number one in true fleets again, with the brand's growth at 115.2% for August. What brought the upward trend? Well, none other than the up itself, with a little support from the Polo. Next on the list was Audi, jumping six places into third, 
with a triple A growth of 123.2%. While triple A? Well, it's the A3, the A4, and the A5 in that order that pushed their brand forward. While Nissan comes third in our order of OEM mansions, on seventh on the ranking ladder, but number one in terms of highest growth, posting a blistering 347.3% surge in registrations. The Japanese manufacturer had uh, the Qashqai and its LEAF models at the bank, with the latter outstripping last year's volume ninefold. Kia came next thanks to a solid performance of 112% plus, finishing 8th in the ranking. Sportage and Nero were their star models in this month. All of the Sportage registrations coming from a petrol engine and all of the Nero's hybrids, of course. Although we hear that the EV is not too far away from being released. Last of the triple digit growers was Tesla, up by 156.2%. For now it's only being driven by the Model S and the Model X, though I'm very sure once released, the Model 3 will make its impact felt very quickly. So, with CO2 emissions forming a major part of the taxation in the Netherlands, it comes as no surprise to see that any popularity for diesel engines mostly comes from the fleet channel. Though even in fleet, diesel registrations continue to decrease significantly, bringing their share of the fleet market down to just 26.2% year to date. No surprises then in that petrol vehicles are really picking up the pace for August, with a plus 99.3% and a year to date of plus 34.3% helping to increase its fleet market share to 63.6%. Alternative fuels also were not slacking, with a 70.5% plus for August and a 96.8% for the year to date. It has now upped its fleet share into double digits, scoring a 10.3% of the marketplace. Well, it seems that Mike has not only stolen most of the limelight this time, but most of the, uh, but he's already stolen some of my thunder when it comes to the most registered petrol, diesel, hybrid, and electric for the month of August. Number one registered petrol model, the VW Up. Number one registered diesel model, the Renault Megane. Number one registered hybrid model, the Kia Nero. And number one registered true fleet electric model, Tesla's Model S. Yeah, but I left it with Renault. Yeah. True. We did, however, see some opposing effects when we looked at all of the Volvo V60 models. But don't take my word for it, let's ask Data Force's very own Dutchman, Julian de Groot. Thank you, Richard. Richard is absolutely right, because when you look at the private segment, for instance, there you can see that 90% or even more of the buyers take the petrol version. Now, however, if you look at the uh, fleet customers, 60% of those, or even more than that, actually buy the diesel version. And that actually proves also this year that in the right segment, with the right car, you still have an opportunity to sell diesel. So on that note, bedankt voor het kijken. Voor de volgende keer. What they said. <laughs>